Okay, so last year we may have finished up the line of Warwick Davis Leprechaun horror films with Leprechaun Back to the Hood, but there were still some movies that more or less followed up on those. There's Leprechaun Origins in 2014, and then Leprechaun Returns in 2018, but notice I said we finished up the Warwick Davis Leprechaun horror films because there's still other Davis Leprechaun movies that come from the bizarre universe of what if the leprechaun was a children's movie character? Possibly it's in the universe of what if it was Jason Voorhees who inspired the delinquents from Ernest Goes to Camp. And with that we have a very unlucky leprechaun. Not that he was all that lucky in the other movies either. They all had him losing his gold and then dying, whether it was in Vegas or in space. And it was after space that we got this family adventure starring Davis as Lucky the Leprechaun, which came out in 1998, post-space, and pre-hood in 2000. I like that even the crew for this sounds like it should be part of a horror film, too. It was written by Craig J. Nevius, the writer and creator of Black Scorpion, though it does have some low-budget kids' movies to his name, like the animated Ten Commandments and Aladdin and the Adventure of All Time. He also wrote Step Monster and Corman's Fantastic Four, which makes sense. Roger Corman produced this movie, too. But what's the name of the production company that made this? Oof, I'm sure some commentators would run to their panic room over that logo. The movie itself has the musical score that you think it does. I don't think he's gonna rap in this one. The composer, John Faulkner, only worked on one other movie, which is Blood Fist 8. Gonna have to start watching those movies so I can find out if Part 8 has the best music of all of them. And it's got camera work by Harry Box? I keep getting confused as to what type of movie I'm watching. What this is about is a father and daughter, played by Tim Matheson and twins in their only acting role to date, who leave Chicago to move to a new house in Ireland. Amazingly, they made it from the States to Ireland, still with the bicycle attached to the roof. I love going into a movie like this, where this is the first line. Hey, cheer up. It's not going to be as bad as you think. It's probably going to be worse. Oh, come on, as long as we leave the country, there's no way the ghosts of my former bullies will follow me here. It really does feel like Matheson is again playing a Stephen King character. This next book is a surefire bestseller. It's going to make us rich beyond our wildest dream. There were far too many distractions when I tried writing in our last hotel. At least here, I'm just distracted by awkward pauses and sentences. We'll never get enough money to move back home. Okay, we'll go for a take two. Wait, uh, never mind. The leprechaun is much faster in this movie. We would have seen him for sure if he traveled by pogo stick. The children are always the first to know about leprechauns. Dad, the sun didn't just fall down. It was knocked down by a leprechaun. It's a slow down leprechaun crossing. Why do I think they're just a group of bratty kids hopped up on jolt, pranking the out-of-towners and making them think they'll instantly find a leprechaun in Ireland? Howard and Molly are in the right spot. Listen to the guy's accent and his name. I'm Howard Wilson. Oh, uh, Mulligan's the name. Patrick Mulligan at your service. Oh, I changed it from Irish E. O'Shaughnessy. I think he's got some anger issues. Let me present you with a rose. And if ever I get my hands on you, I'll squash you like a bug. Do you hear me now? Don't give my child dead flowers. Can there be one inherited house in the world that isn't cursed? Why is it called Misfortune Manor? It's called Misfortune Manor because the house is cursed. We didn't think anyone would be stupid enough to live here. It's like straight up calling the Amityville house the portal to hell. He just goes ahead and tells them that everyone who lives here has bad luck. My uncle happens to be dead. See, what should I tell you? 
bad luck. Nothing gets between Tim Matheson and his dream, lest you forget his movie literally called Dreamer, he'll turn the house into a bowling alley. Well, Howard did want a true Waking Ned Divine experience. After all, Patrick here actually was Ned Divine in that film. They'd be foolish not to live here, but suddenly Dad is very stingy when it comes to the wishing well. Dad, can I? No, honey, we can't afford to be throwing away money. Not even a penny. Wow, they are right. Corman does use the change in the payphones for the budget. There are actually some good lines here. I would really appreciate it if you wouldn't fill her head with a lot of superstitious nonsense. But this is Ireland. Right? You'd be doing something wrong if you didn't see the ghost of your dead wife tonight. I'm still waiting for a horror film to happen. When it shows his feet, it is like I'm seeing the horror movie version. Even this sinister approaching the house shot makes me wonder if it is a little self-aware of the casting. But they opted not to go for the demonic makeup this time. It's creepy enough with seeing him sneak into the girl's room to give her the wishing coin back. If the leprechaun isn't the villain, someone else will have to be. Is that the villain stinger, or did the guy just shit his pants getting out of the car? I'm assuming this is the greedy mayor, on account of his name being Mayor McGreedy. He's so obsessed with collecting debt that he goes around wearing gold chains. Sadly, Howard has inherited his uncle's debt, and the mayor has sinister plans to tear down this dump. I'm knocking down every local castle and manor to make way for my plans to turn this backwater into a, a major metropolis. That seems ambitious and would take decades. I'm not sure you have that kind of power, Mayor McGreedy. I do like Tim Matheson in this, especially with lines like, Not everybody can be bought, Mr. McGreedy. And there's bullies too, like King Bullies did a summer at Hogwarts so they could steal Hermione's lunch. The biggest problem in this town isn't the assholes, it's the oversharing. Ever since Mayor McGreedy's wife died, tragically, of food poisoning from her own pot roast. What does that have to do with my sandwich being stolen? Don't dump your shit on me. And why is it getting horny? I may be too much woman for him. Is it going to be on the test that you want to bang the mayor? Unfortunately, she now has to scrub toilets in the hotel that the cast and crew are staying at. Could be worse, the leprechaun could be annoying her by repeating everything that she says and scaring her in a fridge. Also, he has teleportation powers too. They just met, and already they have witty banter. Wait a minute! You're supposed to be chasing me! I am supposed to be chasing you! <laughs> this movie is what happens when mom says, we don't need to go to the theater. We have Darby O'Gill and the little people at home. Thank goodness she captures him, though. She's gonna toss him into the well to make sure her wish of getting rid of his ass comes true. And don't touch his gold. It's your pot of gold now, but I can't give it to you until you let me out. Then he's gonna make a pot of gold grow in her stomach till she explodes. Let's take a break. I've seen him kill too many people over gold to ever trust him in this. Who's gonna come and play? Come on the tours like St. Patrick's Day. Come on, you're Irish. Okay, okay, I'm Irish. So look for this display with beer wool. I'm Irish. Wherever you buy Coors and Coors Light beer. We're back just in time for him to make a mess out of things. Good thing all those rocks were styrofoam or she'd have to go to the hospital immediately. Hell, he did knock her ass out cold, and the cut makes me think she's in heaven now. Eh, she'll be fine. Dad's got an interior decorator love interest now. And hello, that's Lisa Thornhill, Ross's date who he tried the European backpacking story on. See, that's why it didn't impress her. Should have incorporated leprechauns. <laughs> Ross has a thing for dating women from leprechaun movies. Molly's got enough company with the teleporting leprechauns. I'm getting distinct to catch a Yeti vibes from this. Let's just hope it has the same ending. There is wonder in most everything I see. 
this really will be the greatest Leprechaun movie if it ends like that. I love that he makes her sign a form that he's not responsible for any injuries. He's one step ahead of the other Leprechaun, who was finally defeated in civil court. So Lucky the Leprechaun, that is his name by the way, has a lot of rules. If she catches him, then he'll finally be able to go back to the magical world of Leprechauns. But didn't she already capture him earlier? Why is this the most confusing Leprechaun film? And let's just say the horror movies had the better one-liners. That's gonna hurt. That gives me an idea. <laughs> I'm jealous of the neighbors who are hanging out with Trumpy right now. Anyway, this will go well. She takes him to school with her. There's gotta be something here to fight the bullies. A dream catcher. Again, not a Stephen King property. We don't need shit weasels coming out of the bullies' asses. Don't worry, with Tim Matheson here, we'll also get Animal House references. Food fight! Otter still has it better. Somewhere right now, poor Flounder is stuck in Baby Huey's Easter. Here, let's go to the hideout. He's got a plan to make sure that her dad doesn't find out that she got in trouble at school. What do you have in mind? Another charm. A magic candle. He will set the school on fire. Instead, he gives her a lucky starfish. Why do I think that this is actually a beach bum dressed like a leprechaun and giving her trash that he found? Or <laughs> maybe he's real. Uh, what you doing? I was just rubbing your leg. It's the tentacle, stupid! Well, his magic dust is kicking in. This is a whole movie of nobody able to catch anything. <laughs> Excellent. Now the whole town will have the plague. It goes without saying, he's got the power of slapstick. <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me this isn't the Banshees of Inishirin? On the plus side, Dad may not know she got in trouble at school, but downside, he knows she's in trouble with the mayor. Thanks, Lucky. Not that Dad cares anyway. She magically transformed the house into a whole other set. I feel like I'm in the wrong house. <laughs> what? Uh, that's preposterous. <laughs> you owe me $100,000. I had to install the fireplace. Oh, and she's got another wish for Lucky. Let's kill Dad's girlfriend. I wish she would just get out of here and leave us alone. Oh, she's all right. Have you and Sharon even had a scene together? Quit counting on Lucky. He's still gonna make things worse. That's no Lucky Star. What is it? He's a shooting star. No, it's gonna project the movie Wish onto the walls. Quick, get that damn star. Since no one else can see Lucky, Dad just thinks she trashed the room. This movie thinks it's E.T., but is really Drop Dead Fred. It isn't safe to be out here no matter where she goes. Oh, excellent. My little girl trap. It's been harder to set since I'm not allowed around the school. The movie dumps more rules on us. The reason the manor is cursed is because Lucky hasn't eaten a four-leaf clover in a hundred years. This is making up rules as it goes along. Look, he can even make people appear out of thin air. It's dinner time. Hi, Wait, so many questions. What's this guy's story? Does he just exist in limbo until Lucky needs to set a dinner table? And why doesn't he do this more often? Uh, what? There's also a violinist? Uh, take five. And did he just kill her? Does she cease to exist if the leprechaun isn't hungry for clovers? We're halfway through. I hope the rest of it is just them looking for clovers in the woods. Oh no, we'll get you out of these woods, even if we have to chase you out with a bulldozer. In a hundred years, I guess it never occurred to him to just grow the clovers himself. That's what Mr. Mulligan said, among other things. Mr. Mulligan says, if you play music for it, it will grow even faster. Really? Mr. Mulligan is also drunk off his ass. Makes sense to Lucky, who's also shit-faced. Good thing he's invisible, or Dad would chase him out with a shotgun. <sighs> Any reason why you've been laying down there for hours? Whatever. Dad's weird, too. 
Howard, I can't read if you're watching me. Sorry, I just really want you to build us a pool in the backyard. So anyway, they're fixing a go-kart now. And Mulligan is gonna go live in a home for a while. I'm not sure I like the idea that the movie is now about a go-kart race with the bullies. Somehow Lucky will make the damn thing explode. Look, she almost killed the magical starfish, who is feral now. So Howard's line of books is a series of how-to books. I think only so that this line can happen. I have written how-to books on just about every subject under the sun. And the one thing that I don't know how to is communicate with my daughter. Just rent parenthood like the rest of us did. It'll prepare you for the racing crash scene. Or write some better jokes for the leprechaun. Molly! See ya! Wouldn't want to be ya! I miss the dignified leprechaun lines, like a friend with weed is a friend indeed. Turns out they didn't have parenthood at the video store, so instead, Dad watched the Simpsons episode where Homer and Bart build a soapbox racer together. The real magic is the power of montage. <laughs> there are a lot of them in this. They even have a name for the go-kart, too. The Rainbow Racer. We got the idea from the production company logo. It sounded better than the Marshmallow Horseshoe. This all works out. The prize for the race is thousands of dollars. That might be enough to pay off their debts. <laughs> it is assembled from family sitcoms. Though I would appreciate it if more focus was put into the teacher wanting to bang the mayor plotline. The editors have the right idea. If parents don't want to be there, it's okay. We'll speed up the footage to make this shit go by quicker. Still not moving fast enough. Let's take another break and get a snack or something. Hello. So you'll remember to have plenty of Bartles and Jane's premium wine coolers on hand for St. Patrick's Day. Ed has prepared a special St. Patrick's Day package. A green bottle. Please enjoy your St. Patrick's Day weekend with Bartles and James, and thank you once more for your support. Thank God they're wearing helmets. That covers up the stunt drivers, and we can dub the lines in later. Unfortunately, I don't know who is who in this race. It has to be against the rules that the bullies are using gadgets, like expelling broken glass out of their cars that runs others off the road. And I think they may be equipping toxic waste bombs. Go-kart races go hard in Ireland. If Nintendo and Tim Taylor taught me anything, it's that they need more power. I need more power! How about some leprechaun power? Yeah, no thanks. Give me the blue shell. I'll knock the first place driver into some lava. Less people will question that than her go-kart flying now. They're seriously regretting not naming the car Shitty Shitty Bang Bang. So she's won the race? Is the movie over? I guess this was the main plot now. There's been a lot of plots in this. Money Wilson must be disqualified. What? Obviously, cheat it. No, 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 just end the movie! Crap, now it is the Baby Huey movie, where the last act was all about Huey proving he didn't steal an egg that the villain's did. You are ruining Dad's rom-com plot! I was gonna wait for a better time to tell you this, but I have asked Sharon to marry me, and she said yes. She looks thrilled. It's been a magical three days of knowing each other. Molly knows who to blame for this. Go get that leprechaun's ass! <clears throat> oh, God damn it, you little shit! I'm the nice leprechaun in this movie. Remember the rules? I can't bring a good person bad luck on purpose. Rule number one, leprechauns always tell the truth. I have never seen Warwick Davis follow any of those leprechaun rules. She has a good point, where he really has brought her nothing but bad luck this whole time. So we need the third act breakup, where she literally wishes for him to be gone. Plus, they're going to live with Sharon now. <laughs> Great. Hmm. Glad I spent all that time redecorating the place for free. Oh, right. I forgot about the plot with the four-leaf clover. Sorry, you already wished for him to go away. He's either dead or spending time in purgatory with his waiter and violinist. 
but he's gonna miss Mayor McGreedy wasting no time in destroying the place. I want the family to see it with their own eyes. Even Herman Bloom's sons have a front row seat. Hell, the evil mayor wants to demolish the house even with the girl inside. <laughs> Good news! You just won millions in a lawsuit! Too bad she's in heaven again. Find the waiter! He's around here somewhere. Oh, and there's a twist. Because Dad also rented a Wizard of Oz knockoff. <laughs> Was it all a dream? Well, since your accident, the old pig pen a few days ago, you've been mostly asleep in bed. What? I had the weirdest dream. The teacher and the mayor banged, and they helped his sons cheat at go-kart racing with gadgets. Also, I'm psychic and predicted Sharon coming into our lives. Well, that's right. How'd you know? The same way I know you and my dad are going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> that sounds like really silly writing. We barely know each other. No matter, the movie we just saw plays out again in montage, only with the slight difference of everything working out fine. Even when the mayor wants to destroy the house, it was just in time for Dad to get an advance on his book, which gives them the money they need. I prefer a simple nightmare becomes reality ending. Thank you very much. So, okay, given the leprechaun actually exists, that means he can alter time? No matter, after being caught a second time, Molly and Mulligan can keep the gold. You're the best leprechaun I could have ever wished for. Well, she's not wrong. And even more good news, it's close to ending with this shot. See you soon. Oh. Just saying, I bought it way more when he turned giant. That very much had a Disney Channel original movie feel to it. Swipe out one Stephen King alumni for another, and you can have a double feature with Mr. Boogity. But even with this version of The Leprechaun, it still wasn't the end, as the movie was directed by Brian Kelly, who one year later, in 1999, directed the sequel, The White Pony, which, yes, does contain the return of Warwick Davis as Lucky. Lucky the Leprechaun. And I sure hope it has racing in it, too. Oof, way too wholesome. Even if, I'm not gonna lie, the starfish will be haunting my dreams for a while. Please, Mr. Starfish, can I rub just one of your legs? No way! I'm using 